we had requested the SABC board, I mean, the, the, um, the South African Airways board to present a rescue plan. And um, Ms. Dutumieni in her capacity as the chairperson of, that, of the board was invited um, to appear before the committee. So when it, she came before the committee, um, her main concerns were around, um, were around certain, the awarding of certain contracts, including the catering contracts. And um, one of those issues that she was also concerned about, which she included as part of the rescue plan, was to replace um, the white, um, white pilots, old pilots, with the young black pilots. I then raised an issue on that. Now, it's very important to understand that where I come from, my understanding of transformation is not necessarily about one skin pigmentation, but it's also about um, quality systems that you put in place. And it's also about ensuring that the people that get appointed have the key, competen key competences to be able to, to, to do that job. My view was that uh, I asked her, if she removes all the white, um, the white pile, old pilots, has she considered the fact that South African Airways is internationally acclaimed as the safest airline simply because of those very pilots? How is she going to mitigate against that? And um, it was then that um, it became a, 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 a heated debate because um, I was viewed even by my own colleagues as being anti-transformation. But after we finished that meeting, um, I was then called by Des Van Royen, who was at the time the chief, we was the whip of the committee and um, he also invited Pinky Kekana. I, I believe she is currently the Deputy Minister of Communications. I stand to be corrected. I'm not sure what exactly, what, what kind of, what position she's holding currently. So um, we then went for lunch. They invited me for lunch. And we usually do that anyway when we wanted to engage on some issues. When we got at that lunch meeting, Des Van Royen, my whip, the whip of the committee, then asked me, why did I do something that was counter-revolutionary, uh, and that is questioning the transformation agenda that Comrade Dudu, um, Dudu, Dudu Miani was um, putting forward. <clears throat> and I was then told that I must never, ever challenge Comrades. I was extremely critical of Dutu Mieni. And um, it was a matter that was widely discussed about how I'm, I, I take it. Hey, at some stage, I remember that um, one of the comrades, I don't even, I don't remember who was that comrade, but ANC comrade came to me and said, but comrade Makosi, we have a problem with you when you start agreeing with Floyd Shivambu. Um, Floyd was coming from the EFF and uh, sometimes we aligned in terms of how we were looking at the situation, at the financial position, the critical financial position of, 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 of South African Airways. So um, there was a view that um, when uh, the opposition is raising something that you are not necessarily um, that is, even if it's correct, whatever that the opposition is raising is correct, you have to, uh, you have to oppose it. And my view was not like that. I felt that if the opposition is opposing something and they are putting forward a compelling business case and they put forward evidence before, the, before us, I didn't, I didn't see why we shouldn't, we should disagree with them. 
So basically I'm saying to you, I was finding myself constantly in conflict with some of the comrades, even those that were supportive of me. But when I do it with other comrades, they were, they were like kind of um, uh, cautious with dealing with me. So what happened? Uh, what happened to your membership of the Standing Committee on Finance and where did you go next? Eventually, I was, I was removed from the Standing Committee of Finance. And I remember very well because Yunis Karim, who was the chair, was actually very aggrieved by that. Consistently on Thursdays during our parliamentary, ANC parliamentary caucus meetings, we were addressed by uh, the Secretary General, Gwede Mantashe. And uh, often, I think Jesse Duarte was often there as well. And uh, both of them were taking turns. And sometimes if one of them is not there, the other is there. They were, they were telling us that the ANC is under attack. We needed to defend the ANC. And, um, and we were told that an attack in the, in the position of the president of the ANC is the attack to the entire organization. And uh, some of us were feeling strongly that that was not so. To us, it was one man that was a liability to the ANC at that time. It was President Jacob Zuma and not necessarily the entire ANC. But uh, we were then instructed to vote in favor of President Zuma's continuation as the president of the republic. And we were even told that no one will be allowed to vote against the, the, the motion of no confidence. And I recall that, in fact, in one of the media, one of the media houses, even quoted the Gwede Mandashe saying, um, if anyone who will vote against the president, in other words, if you are voting in against the, um, if you are voting in favor of the no, no vote of confidence on President Zuma, um, Gwete Mandashe said that, that would be the highest form of betrayal. 